take off running and the batter actually turns around and, and bunts the ball catching the defense by surprise. Amen. I mean it's, it's a secret approach but it is as a, when it's executed perfectly it's defenseless. You can't stop it. Right? Uh, just just one aspect right off the bat. You know, Just thinking also even in, in football you know the home side kick even though they do it differently now you know it's obvious the way they do it back in our time, I mean, it was, it was like a sneak type of thing that you would catch us off guard. In fact, uh, I, I believe even when the Saints won the Super Bowl, the way that they did it that particular time was the old school way, where you, it caught the team by surprise, okay? And so things that's, that's done in secret or things that's done from that perspective can be very powerful. When you think about uh, the mob, as they call it, the mob has always operated 
out of something they call anonymity, meaning in secret. You know, the mob, uh, the mob boss oftentimes sits out in front of a storefront, <clears throat> you know, with plain clothes that seem like he bought from, in many cases, this is the old school mob guys, from, from Walmart or somewhere, but he's a, he's a multimillionaire. But he's got so many things going on in secret behind the scenes that he's able to be very effective. And in fact, many people don't know uh, that uh, there's, there's a couple of guys who were really hated by the mob. One was the guy who gave the information for Francis Ford Coppola to do The Godfather because he what divulged secrets and they despised him because of that. Another guy who was later on very despised by the mob was actually John Gotti because he was so flamboyant, right? He, he, he was out of the closet. But their main approach was, again, from the perspective of anonymity, to do things, what, in secret. It's, it's, it's really more powerful when folk do not see something coming, right? Uh, and watch this. <laughs> My son got a little saying, well, they didn't steal it, right? Oftentimes, even the Lord used things in secret, right? I'm reminded, uh, back in the Bible, when <clears throat> Joshua took the Israelites up against Jericho. And of course, they, they won that battle. They marched around on the walls of Jericho. But then later on, they went up against this little country called Ai. And Ai surprised them and wound up winning the first battle. But if you read about that passage, when the Lord sent them back, and talk about sent the Israelites back to fight against Ai, he didn't send them head on. He actually ambushed him, right? Ambushed him. And he did he did like a sneak attack, all right? It's more powerful. I'm telling you that when you do things in secret, right? I always think about my, my uncle, my eldest uncle, uh, my mother's oldest brother, who was a little man in stature. I mean, very, very short, you know, frail look at him. But he had this saying, <clears throat> he says, whenever you get in a fight with somebody, he says, the best thing, I mean, the first thing is the best thing. Amen. Yeah, that, that, that surprise lick, right? He said, that's the, that could end the whole fight if you do it right. <laughs> Are y'all catching this, right? Even if we, we, we think about so many things in the media right now uh, with our government, but, but uh, it's a reason that the guys who protect the president is called the secret service, right? That they keep him covered. And they keep them covered, and they, they may have the one or two that you can see, but there's so many others that you don't that they can keep them covered. And then the things that we most coveted in our government, right, we call those things top secret. Right? We don't want nobody to know. In fact, our former president could be in a world of trouble because he allowed classified information or information that was labeled top secret to be exposed. So it's with this in mind that we want to look uh, at the word tonight. I'm going to go back here to chapter 6 of St. Matthew. And we actually want to start at the very first verse. Right? In fact, we want to do this in sections. Verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. We want to deal with first and foremost. That's what the Bible says. It says, take heed that you do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. He says, therefore, when thou doesn't thy arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. It says, verily, ver verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. He says, but when thou does it thou arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand do. That thy arms may be in secret, and thy father will see it in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. Amen? Amen? So first thing, first thing, and, and you're going to find a theme is, is pretty much about giving throughout this passage that we're going to deal with from this verse 1 through 18. Uh, 
And this first part here is, is about giving stuff to others. Giving stuff to others. But keeping in mind that there's success found in what? Doing things in secret. Okay? I think about giving them right off the bat, the first thing that comes to my mind is tithing. Amen. Tithing. And there's um, there's some, some things in place pertaining to tithing. Uh, right off the bat, I, I oftentimes tell people that tithing uh, started from the very beginning. Amen. Tithing uh, started even in the uh, in the garden, amen, with, with Adam and Eve. Right? Because the Lord told Adam, says, man, I've given you all this stuff. Everything is yours. He says, but there's just one right over here. And I don't want you to touch. We know the tree of good and evil. Don't touch that one. Right? I'm, I'm reserving that one for myself. That we can really establish what a covenant. Right? Right? That I can really find out this obedience involved in this thing. Amen? So tithing, we know, is one form of giving. And uh, we also talk about offering. Amen. All right. Tithing, as, as we teach here, uh, is a debt that we owe. Amen. But giving an offering is simply a seed that we sow. Amen. When you give an offering to the church, I mean, that's, that's, that's you of your own accord. The offering can be whatever you want it to be. Amen. But tithe is, is something different. Amen. Tithe is based upon a really an established request that God has already put in place. Amen. Through our covenant relationship with Him. But then what the Bible talks about here is alms. It talks about alms. Amen. I'll read this uh, once more again here in, in Matthew 6. It says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise you have your reward no reward of your father which is in heaven. It says if you've given out your alms and you have seen the men and you get no reward in heaven. He says therefore when thou doest thy alms do not sound a trumpet before thee as a hypocrite. You in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Very I say unto you, they have their reward. What is their reward? That people know that you give alms. That's their reward. That you associate that. That's their reward. Oh man, you saw that big old gift he gave them. That's, that's your reward. All right? But when you do it in secret now, God the Father will reward you. Now, what, again, what is alms? Alms in the Greek is eleos, right? And it simply means to pity. Or to show mercy, right? That's really what we're doing when we're giving alms. We're giving alms, you know, we're really blessing somebody who has a legitimate need, all right? And again, the main point that they're making here is that you shouldn't be putting the person business out in the street, all right? I mean, idealistically, when you give alms, you don't want nobody to know. Say, so don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, the more that you can conceal this thing, Keep it between you, that person, and God, the more you're in line to receive blessings from God. Amen? Right? And guess what? We know that God can bless you a whole lot better than that individual that you blessed or you gave the alms to. Amen? Amen. So, 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 it's giving stuff to others, first and foremost, in verses 1 through 4. Go on to say in, in uh, verse 3, it says, But when thou does thou, when thou does alms, let not thy left hand know what the right hand do it. That thy alms may be where? In secret. Amen. And thy father would see it in secret. He knows all things. Shall reward thee not openly. And your blessings will come. And they're going to be visible. Amen. You won't miss it. All right. And God be the glory. All right. Verses 5 through 8. Verses 5 through 8 deals with ground rules of prayer. Ground rules of prayer. And what we'll find out about prayer is prayer is really about giving as well. Prayer is about giving as well. Amen. But verses 5 through 8 is about the ground rules of prayer. Right? The, the, you know, because one of the main things that as we 
work or walk on this Christian journey, one of the main things, what it's all about, is our motives. Uh, we can even go back to Sunday when I say that and say our what? Our heart. Right? I mean, we can do a lot of things, but are you doing it from the heart? It is. We got a little saying, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. All right. All right? So, so what the, the point that we make with that is, just because you give don't mean you really love, right? Because God will what? deal with the heart. He knows when we're doing things from the heart. Because a lot of folk, as we're making a point here, do things just to be seen. Amen. All right? So motives matter in whatever it is that we're doing. And as the Bible said, man look at the outward appearance, but God looks where? At the heart. He knows uh, how sincere we were and whatever it is that we've done. So, ground rules for prayer. Ground rules of prayer. In verse 5, he says, And when thou prayest, uh, I always got to slow my road right there, kind of slow down. And then say, If you pray. That's right. <laughs> say, When you pray. Yeah. Amen. And we know what the Bible says in um, Luke 18 and 1 that men ought to always pray and not faint. So he says, when you pray, we really need to always be about what praying, because he said we need to pray without ceasing, right? So he says, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. Given his ground rules about praying. He says, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their rewards. And that is their rewards. Man, you heard man so and so be great, man. You, you heard I, you know, yeah. that's it. Game over. He says, but thou, but thou praise. He says, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And thy Father which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen? Amen. Right? Uh, uh, uh. Watch this. I think I may have mentioned this even last week. You know, now of course we, we, we come to the synagogue and we come to the to the church and we pray. Right? We we intercede on behalf of others. But I'm telling you the key to the power of those prayers is based upon what kind of prayer life you have in secret. Yeah. Are y'all listening? Right? Because that's that's where the true essence of your prayer life is. That's what God measures the true essence of your prayer life. Do you, do you have an intimate relationship with God that you go into your secret closet and you pray to him one-on-one? -on -one? Amen? Amen? We understand. We understand about uh, prayer to, to strengthen other individuals. We understand what the Bible says. There's two or three that gather together. He's in the midst. Right? As we say, we understand about intercessory prayer, coming and praying on behalf of others. We, we understand about altar prayer, you know, man of God praying for the whole congregation, so on and so forth. Right? But he's talking about the intimacy. I mean, when we talk about the intimacy, we talk about one-on-one. -on -one. We're talking about in your secret closet. Amen? He said, that's what I will reward you what? Openly. Amen? So once again in verse 6, he says, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when I have shut the door, pray to thy Father, which is in, in secret, and thy Father shall which see it in secret shall reward thee openly. He says, but when thou pray, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father know what things you have need of before you ask. Amen. 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 Last man, you know, again the key. Prayer brings us back to Sunday. It's all about your heart. It's all about your heart. You know, we don't we don't have to stand up here and pray for a gazillion hours or whatever. It's all about your heart. That's that's the key. Because God knows our heart. Amen. He knows what we need before we ask. Alright? He said that, that intimacy is the key as well. That we work one on one with the Lord. That's your most important prayer. You're one-on-one -on -one with him. Okay? All right. 
So now, verses 9 and 10. Giving honor to God. That's, that's the most important thing in the prayer. Is giving honor to God. That's why it's first and foremost that we ought to honor God. You know, I mean, a lot of times I even think about, I think about you uh, praise and worship, you know. I know a lot of people say, well, it's Bible study. Let's just, let's just get on to Bible study. The Bible. Well, for me, from my perspective, you know, last time I checked, I got the mic. From my perspective, to stop and do that praise and worship is honoring God. Yes, sir. Okay? That's honoring God. That's why the Bible says, you know, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Amen? Mm -hmm. To me, it's just to me. To me, you can't, you know, you can't do a spiritual thing too much. We can't pray to God too much. We can't praise Him too much. Right? We can't get in our word too much. So I like to honor God. That's the key. That's, that's one of the main reasons why we were created, as the Bible says in Revelation. We were created to give Him honor, to worship Him, to give Him praise. Right? And I just believe when we take the time to stop to do that, that God, you know, as the Bible says, He loves the Bible and praises His people. That now we, we, we prick his ear to get his attention. Amen? Amen. And there's nothing like the attention of God in your situation. Right? So so here in verse 9 and 10, it's really about uh, it's really about giving honor to God. Amen? Amen. Look at what it says. He says, after this manner, therefore pray. So you're gonna pray, this this is how you ought to pray, first and foremost. Our Father which are in heaven. How we be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's first and foremost about God's agenda, right? We ought to have that flow in place. I don't care how bad you need something. I don't care what your situation is. You need to honor God first and foremost. Amen? Amen? Amen. That's first and foremost. We need to honor God. Your situation can't be more important than God. And if we take the time to honor God, now we get God involved in our situation. Mm -hmm. And God plus zero is the majority. If you got God, you know, it don't matter who's against you. Amen? Amen. Okay? Amen. So giving honor to God is, is, is crucial. And this is what the scripture is telling us here. All right? Verse 11, now, now, because I'm in order, God is a God of order. Right? Because I put God first, seek you in the, in the same uh, chapel, seek you first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, all these other things that we had. Now that I'm in order, I'm honoring God first. I got God's agenda before my own. Now I'm in line to what? To be able to ask God to give me something. Amen? Because I'm doing things God's way. Amen? Okay, verse 11 says, give us this day our daily bread. All right, and, and, and please don't miss it. That's really the way we ought to approach God. God, give me an opportunity. God, give me something to work with. All right? Here it is. God, God says he can supply all of our needs. Amen? I, I really think it's up to us to work things out to get some of the things that we want. Right? Because what we have is a partnership with God. Here it is. If you don't do nothing, man, there's a good chance you may not get nothing. That's right. God don't like slothful individuals. He calls them wicked. All right? So, so, so what we're praying to God for is, is an opportunity. You know, God, give me my help. Give me my strength. Give, give me my daily bread. Give me what I need to be able to go out here and what? Get something for myself. That's, that's really the way God wants to act because it's a partnership, right? If that's the case, watch this now, watch this. Look, he set Adam and Eve up, but they still had to work. First thing he gave Adam was a job before he even gave it a woman, all right? So God wants us to work. So what we should ask God for is an opportunity. What, 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 what we should ask God for is, is our, what, our daily bread. Amen. Right? Just give me an opportunity, God. Give me my health and strength. And I can go forward. 
And we can work together with this partnership. Amen? Amen. All right. And then we get to, uh, this thing is about uh, forgiveness, man. Forgiveness. That's a big part of, of our prayer, right? That we forgive. <laughs> you, you, you think about this now. It's uh, all dealing with giving. Verses 1 through 4. Giving stuff to others. That's basically what it's focused on. Then it gives us the ground rules of prayer, verses 5 through 8. Then verse 9 and 10, giving honor to God. Amen? Giving honor to God. Then in verse 11, we're asking God to give us what? An opportunity, right? To go forth, to work with and for him. Amen? Now, verse 12 through 15, really we're talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the, is the major theme out of it. I mentioned a few other things, and we're going to read it. But forgiveness is the major theme, right? Watch it now. Verse 12, he says, And forgive us our debtors, as we forgive our debtors. We'll come back to that. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, the glory of heaven and ever. Amen. And that goes even further about the forgiveness piece, because this is the key. He says, for if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. And I used to tell my players, um, to break this down with them, that we hang ourselves with our own prayers. You know, because I mean, look, I can go all the way back to Willie Hall. And even right now, you go to the average little playground, they're saying the our father prayer, the model prayer. They're saying, you know, kids learn it early. I mean, that's that's something the average coach is going to do. They'll say that prayer with their team, right? But if you're not really walking in this thing, you're hanging yourself with this prayer. Why do I say that? Because look at what it says here. Um, he says, he says, uh, I saw back at twelve. He says, for and forgive us our debt. Here it is, as we forgive our debt. In other words, in other words, God, I'm saying, forgive me the way I forgive others. Right? In other words, what I'm saying is, God, if I don't forgive the other people who offended me and messed over me, man, you ain't got to forgive me. <laughs> that puts us in bad trouble, bro. Amen, bro. If you got one of them stony hearts where you can't forgive nobody, because you actually have prayed and asked God not to forgive you. Mm. So the forgiveness piece is crucial. Right? Because as, as I think about, you know, in marriage counseling, I oftentimes, you know, will, will tell individuals, say, hey, well, you know, I know brother so-and-so, he's a decent guy, but I know he's not perfect. And sister, I've seen you, you carry yourself pretty good, but I know that you're not perfect. In order for y'all to form this perfect union, right, y'all got to be able to what? Forgive one another. Because sooner or later, somebody's going to mess up because You're imperfect. And that's the problem with the whole world, really. We all are imperfect. And so we all gonna come to the point where we have to what? Forgive our brother. Amen. And and what? And our brother gonna have to forgive us too. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, once again, look, look, look at what it says now. So in verse 12, it says, and forgive us our debts. So we forgive our debts. It says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. Thine is the kingdom and the power of the Lord forever. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he goes into detail. Now, well, you can't miss this because he says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Same <coughs> token, though. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you. Forgive your trespasses. Amen? Yeah. Boy, that, that, and that's why I tell people, I promise you, I, I, I'm well documented. Man, if you do me something, I don't care how bad it is, just give me a little time. Right? Most cases, just let me go to sleep. You know? I promise you, I forgive you. And that's sincere, too. Because what I find out, brother, is I don't want you to block my blessings. I, I don't want, look, I don't want to be in, in trouble with God 
behind you. So, so I, I, I go to another level with you and tell you this. Initially, I do it from a selfish standpoint. Initially, I'm forgiving you so quick that it, it, it may not even be pertaining to you. I'm thinking about me. By and by, I catch up with that off the charge, and then I, it, it becomes genuine that I, I, it's all good. But I'm telling you, I'm so focused on this right here that I'm, I'm forgiving you first and foremost for myself because I know how God works. Yes, sir. All right? I know how God works. And I, I don't have hope in my heart against nobody because of that. Because I don't want you to block my blessings. Are y'all catching this? All right? So, so, so that, that part is, is, is crucial. So now we get to our foundation of scripture where we can, we can get into this. And like I say, I can, I can kind of give you the genesis of the whole teaching, you know, as I think about uh, yesterday and what today represents, so on and so forth. All right? We know yesterday was what they call Fat Tuesday or uh, the Day of the Flesh. All right? Bad Tuesday or the day of the flesh. Mighty breath. Same, same thing. Right? In which we allow our flesh to do its own thing. Okay? It's, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the day of, of uh, what they would call it, uh, fluff. Right? The day of indulgence. That's the word I'm looking for. All right? The day of decadence, right? All that. Where you just do your thing. You go and enjoy. Old boy. All right? And then, today comes. <laughs> you done did everything out of the sun yesterday. Today comes. And now today is the day really of repentance. Because of all that you did yesterday. And really beyond. Okay? And so... Uh, to symbolize that, you know, many of us, we go get the ashes put on us, right? Because, you know, the Bible talks about in the Old Testament time when, when, when a person was really uh, fasting, right? Or they wanted people to know that they had a repentant heart, that they would, they would sit down and sackcloth in ashes, yeah. okay? That everybody know. But see, Jesus is letting us know here, man. He says, really, that's, that's symbols of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. All right? He says, God is not looking at the outward appearance. God is looking at your what? Your heart. Yes, right? If you mean it, you ain't got to broadcast it. Right? Yeah, you don't, you don't have to say nothing. It's going to speak for itself if you really mean what you're saying. Right? So, um, and, and I'm not trying to pick on nobody. I'm just, I'm just reading the Bible, as they say, right? Mm -hmm. I'm just reading the Bible. But, but look at it, what it says here uh, in verse 16 of this chapter 6 of Matthew. It says, moreover, when you fast, <laughs> which means we all fast from time to time, amen? He didn't say if you fast, he says when you fast. Because as the Bible lets us know that sometimes we're going to encounter some demons, they ain't going nowhere unless you fast. That's right. Amen? So we ought to have a lifestyle of Fasting. Amen. He says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to fast. He says, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. What is the reward? We know you fast in the day. That's your reward. You fast and you, you, you deep. That, that, that's it. That's your reward. And we know that you're fasting. Right? But again, I mean, I love this teaching here. This, this is Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And if you've got a red letter edition Bible, it's lit up. Everything is red. This is all Jesus. Right? And he's teaching this and he's making it plain. Goes on to say in verse 17, he says, But thou, when thou fast, not like the hypocrites now. He said, but when thou fast, he says, anoint thy head and wash thy face. Right? He said, when you fast, he says, man, you should anoint your head and wash your face that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto the Father which is in secret. 
and thy father will see it in secret, talking about your heart, shall reward thee what? Openly. In other words, the blessings of God will be upon you. Amen? And the blessings of God will, will be upon you to the extent where it's going to show up. In other words, folk will be able to recognize, man, this, this dude is blessed. Right? But it's not because of something that we've seen, but it's something that the Lord saw in him. Amen? Based upon his heart. To God be the glory. Uh -huh. He says, says that thou appeared not unto men to fast, but unto the Father, yes, sir. which is in secret. And our Father will see it in secret, shall reward thee, what? Openly. Amen. So fasting is about what? Giving things up for God. That's really what it's about. It's about us giving things up for God. Think about it now. We can go back uh, to the beginning. Uh, verses 1 through 4. It's talking about giving stuff to others. Mm -hmm. Right? Arms. Amen? Alms. That's when you, you, you bless somebody, especially somebody who is less fortunate. Okay? That you show pity or mercy on the individual. We dealt with the tithing, right? That, that we should give uh, a tenth because that's a covenant relationship with God. We dealt with an offering. Amen? That, that we just be a, a blessing. Amen? That we sow a seed. Okay? And then um, we dealt with ground rules of prayer, but then verse 9 and 10, we talk about giving honor to God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I just want you to see the theme about giving. Amen? That's, that's, that's how it really you will, will find the success in secret if you have what? That giving heart. That giving heart. Amen? And giving honor to God. Amen? And asking God to give us what? Opportunity. Amen? That we can show forth what's really in our heart. Amen? That God will bless us. Amen? And then the key to that is forgiveness. Because we live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. Amen. And if we're going to make strides, we're going to have to forgive one another. Amen? Amen? That's the only way that we're going to get there. But then it comes back to uh, uh, the fasting. Amen? And he says, uh, and, and fasting is giving things up for God. That's really what fasting is about. Amen? Giving things up for God. Now, we can specify for that because there's a difference between, between consecrating and fasting. Fasting is really point blank dealing with food. All right? Consecrating will be giving up other things other than food. Are y'all catching this? All right? Uh, we, 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 we see uh, that here we are in the city of New Orleans and this basically by and large, is a Catholic city, right? Any, anything done from the perspective of the various municipalities, in most cases, overwhelmingly, uh, will be done at a Catholic church, right? And so a lot of the, the, the rituals, if you will, and traditions have been established, you know? We think about, they talk about the Lenten season, all right? Good thing, good idea, right? Uh, that, that, that people will, what, consecrate themselves, right, during this season, all right? But, but, but again, what it's about more than anything is what? Your heart. Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. It's about your heart. And when it's about your heart, it's about being, what, in secret, in intimacy with God. That is, that is the key. And I, I believe that is what will allow a person to grow and receive the understanding and, and cultivate their relationship with God when this thing is done in secret. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. And so we will find success when we cultivate that intimate relationship with God which is indeed uh, in secret. Amen? Amen. So um, once again we think about fasting. Isaiah chapter 58 and it talks about it says is this not the chosen fast amen the chosen fast which will bring certain certain things to pass that is done a certain way when we will have a real uh, true heart for God amen bless the name of the Lord mm -hmm.
Let's look at Isaiah 58. And start with verse 1. It says, Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions. And the house of Jacob their sins. He says, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and have thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, watch it now. He says, Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. He says, Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Verse 5 says, Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul is it to bow down his head as a bulls and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would I call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Verse 6 says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh. It says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy help shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy new reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away the midst of thee, the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness shall be as the noonday. He says, when we fast the proper way, amen, when we fast not to be seen of men, when we fast in secret and to be recognized of God the right way, then the blessing of God will follow us. The blessing of God will be upon us because we fast the proper way. We honor God the proper way. Success is found in secret. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. That's his holy and righteous name. All here is about all eyes are closed. Father, we love you and we praise you. Lord, we give your name the honor as always. We give your name the glory. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for these your people. Lord, Father God, we thank you for the great teacher of the church, which is your Holy Spirit. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you Allow us to understand the importance of intimacy with you, Lord. Father God, that as we uh, make time to be with you in private, even in secret, Lord, that indeed, Father God, you reward us openly, Lord, for our faithfulness. So, Father God, we pray blessings upon every individual under the sound of our voice. Father God, we, we pray for those who perhaps are watching by way of live stream, Lord. Father God, that you are blessings will cover them, Lord. She will lead them and guide them in truth and righteousness. We thank you now. And we offer up this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's the name of the Lord. Amen. Even now, we don't want to take it for granted that everyone has a right standing relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, we offer Christ to you, my brother. We offer Christ to you, my sister, to save your heart to receive Jesus. Lord and personal Savior will return unto him from a backslidden state. We just ask that you uh, focus on Christ and repeat these words after me. Repeat these words, if you will. Father.
Father God, I come now repenting of my sins and asking forgiveness of all my sins. Father God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I believe that Christ Jesus hung bled and died on Calvary's cross and rose from the grave on the third day with all power in his hand. And even right now, be seated at your right side praying for me. And because of this, I believe in my spirit. I'm saved. I'm saved. I am saved. God, we glory you repeating that prayer and be your Savior and life in relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we would ask that you would uh, seek to give the Bible believing church. Of course, we here at Holy Anointed House of Prayer, we make ourselves available to you to help you work out your soul's salvation. Uh, also, we give you an opportunity to soul and to the ministry. You can do that by way of cash here, by way of square or little fine. Or you can do it the old fashioned way by mailing it to mailing it. 1373 Center Street, in the city of New Orleans, 7122. Amen. Um, um, until 1145 Sunday, uh, we pray that the Lord will bless you, that he will keep you, and that you will grow in the things of God and fulfill your destiny in the Lord. Amen.